Welcome back to Paul's Tech News, and happy Halloween. I'm Darth Paul, and before you go out and carve that pumpkin, go trick-or-treating, engage in pagan ritual sacrifice, or some questionable combination of all three, why not get caught up on this week's tech news? Facebook has changed its name to Meta in the hopes that it will distract from a scandalous week of leaked whistleblower documents. Intel made their pre-launch announcements for 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs that will be available November 4th, and I have let my desk get out of control with tech clutter once again. But it's functional this time. I have a lot of test beds going on right now. But AMD, Nvidia, and Intel have all said that they fear continued dark days ahead for the global supply chain, to which I say, good, good. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate is probably the first emotion that you felt when you heard Mark Zuckerberg talk about the metaverse. I sense that it will be a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Kind of like Mark's hand gestures. Seriously, why can't he just gesticulate like a normal human? Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center, one of my favorite places to buy PC parts, whether it's online or at one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies, as well as the custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in stock at your nearest store while ensuring compatibility with your selections. Then you can pick up or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description and don't forget to sign up for the free in-store gift. Sith robes pick up a lot of dog hair, but Facebook has single-handedly destroyed the word meta at their Facebook Connect event on Thursday by taking the word and claiming it for its own. Facebook, as well as all the brands it formerly owned, Facebook itself, Instagram, WhatsApp, Oculus VR, Onavo, and Beluga are now subsidiaries of meta kind of like how Google is now a subsidiary of Alphabet. At the same time, CEO Mark Zuckerberg has announced the metaverse, or at least what he envisions the metaverse to be, which seems to mostly be a pseudo internet that you access with VR goggles so you can have your data harvested and sold more efficiently. This sucks in a variety of ways because the metaverse, kind of like the internet, is an open concept that Facebook is clearly attempting to claim as their own through aggressive branding and awkwardly staged interactions between their demo avatars. Zuck apparently watched Ready Player One and got a bit too excited about a potential virtual world where Facebook has even more insight and control into every aspect of its users' daily lives. But whether your concept of a metaverse comes from the writings of Ernie Klein or a more seminal work like Snow Crash or Neuromancer, chances are you'd be more excited to check it out if it wasn't being built out by the same company that has gleefully chosen maximum profits over things like objective truth or basic humanitarian goodwill in the past decade or so. The timing for this meta move is a little sus as as well here since a trove of internal Facebook documents have been circulating for weeks now, brought forth by Francis Haugen, who worked as a Facebook product manager until May and has since come forward as a whistleblower by providing said documents to the United States SEC as well as the US Congress. It's clear that employees have been vocal in expressing confusion, disappointment, and frustration with executive decisions at Facebook, saying things like, I came here hoping to affect change and improve society, but all I've seen is atrophy and abdication of responsibility, or, how are we expected to ignore when leadership overrides research-based policy decisions to better serve groups inciting violence? You don't have to look too closely to find out that the internet and social media in particular have introduced a wide range of problems to the world that need addressing. But Facebook changing its name or just moving all that garbage into an AR and VR powered metaverse clearly solves nothing. It's just CEOs like Zuckerberg pretending to be big thinkers by copying other people's ideas in an attempt to establish themselves on the ground floor of what they think will be the next big thing in technology. If you want a more informed and pragmatic discussion of all this metaverse stuff though, check out the Ars Technica article covering Oculus Consulting CTO John Carmack's take on the announcements. John is both an early advocate of the metaverse, or something like it, and a person who is bold enough to speak frankly on the subject thanks to his long and storied career history, which includes being the co-founder of id Software, which you might have heard of. I have been pretty actively arguing against every single metaverse effort that we have tried to spin up, says John, adding that setting out to build the metaverse is not actually the best way to wind up with the metaverse. I just don't believe that one player, 
one company winds up making all the right decisions for this. But here we are, Mark Zuckerberg has decided that now is the time to build the metaverse, so enormous wheels are turning and resources are flowing and the effort is definitely going to be made. As part of those efforts, changes are coming to Oculus in that there will be no more Oculus. Meta, or Facebook, is apparently retiring the Oculus virtual reality hardware brand, which they acquired in 2014. New hardware that might come out, like the Quest Pro that leaked this week, will just be called Quest, or the Meta Quest. It's like a confusing discussion between MMO geeks now. The Oculus Quest app will now be the MetaQuest app, and so forth. On the plus side though, they apparently have realized that a lot of people just hate Facebook, which was enough to turn those people away from headsets formerly known as Oculus. So the Facebook login requirement will now also be going away. Oculus accounts, which I guess will maybe be meta accounts now, will be dissociated from their Facebook logins starting in 2022. Funny, I dissociated from my Facebook login in 2017, and it's been a really good decision. I highly recommend it. Oculus isn't dead yet though, and what appeared to be marketing videos from the company were leaked by Twitter user Basti564 late last week, showing off some fancy new features. Full body tracking, additional cameras, fourth gen touch controllers with a built-in stylus, and a slimmed down headset with a charging dock. The leaks weren't confirmed at Facebook Connect, but they did reveal Project Cambria, which is supposed to be a high-end, non-Quest headset that seems to sport many of the same features, as well as high resolution color pass-through for mixed reality experiences, and multi-element pancake lenses to make the headset even more compact. Advances in VR hardware are exciting, yes. We just have to hope that they are used for good and not for evil in the new meta. Moving on, Intel also had an event this week. It was called Innovation, with a capital ON at the end, and they told us all the things about Alder Lake. To quickly summarize, the new CPUs as well as LGA 1700 motherboards launch on November 4th, although pre-sales are already going if you want to buy blind and not wait for reviews. Reviews also go up on November 4th. Initially, there will be six SKUs, the 12600, 12700, and 12900 in K and KF variants, ranging from $264 to $589 each to buy one thousand of them. Retail prices will be a little bit higher than that. The 12700K, for example, is priced at 450 bucks on Newegg right now, up from the $409 tray price. You'll get 16 lanes of PCI Express Gen 5, four more of Gen 4, and an effective Gen 4x8 DMI connection to the chipset, enabling a wide range of configurations for USB and M.2 support. For the CPUs, Intel is switching from a single dubious TDP rating to a more transparent method with base power and max turbo power listed, while also defaulting these k processors to an unlimited max turbo duration, which should help with cross comparisons and understanding what stock actually means. Further details about DDR5 memory support and behavior, how ThreadDirector will work to optimize scheduling with the hybrid P cores and E cores design, CPU packaging and overclocking are available in the article, and I will also have hands-on benchmark test results for you on Thursday, so stay tuned. For now, we are in that sort of in-between time when the CPUs are announced but not really launched, and a few more tidbits have trickled out. Intel apparently mixed up how they handle pre-orders versus orders and just went and shipped 12th gen CPUs to a handful of customers who took pictures of them and posted them to Reddit. Newegg called or emailed said customers asking pretty please not to break the November 4th embargo that they aren't really beholden to anyway, so we'll see in the next few days if they stick to that or not. Probably not though, since Newegg only shipped CPUs and not Z690 motherboards. MSI, meanwhile, showed some deleted Alder Lake CPUs in their Insider livestream on Thursday, apparently confirming the existence of a die variant with six P cores and no E cores, which makes for a smaller 162 square millimeter die and potentially better yields for that part for Intel. Given that the 12600KF has a $264 tray price though, and there will likely be a 12600 non-K below that, which will will have E-cores, this 6P-core only die might be destined for a 12400 SKU that would slot in below that and cost maybe around $200, which could be a new go-to budget gaming CPU for Intel and gamers, which would be good. A reminder to AMD that they've pretty much abandoned that price band since there was never a Ryzen 5600 non-X or anything along the lines of the Ryzen 3600 back when it was available and selling for below $200. Lastly, WCCF Tech reports that older CPU coolers, particularly Ace Tech base units are having difficulty achieving good mounting pressure and contact with Alder Lake CPUs, even with the LGA 1700 upgrade kits that many cooling vendors are offering. LGA 1700 CPUs have a different socket size, mounting hole pattern, and Z height, meaning purpose-built coolers could be the way to go if these reports are true. Hopefully all will be made clear once the embargo lifts Thursday though. Just a few more days to wait, you guys. 
And now let's move on to tech briefs. Even faster than usual today because I need to get back to my CPU testing. Raspberry Pi launched the Zero 2W on Wednesday, which costs just 15 bucks and is five times faster than the original Pi Zero that launched in 2015. They managed to squeeze a one gigahertz ARM Cortex A53 CPU, 512 megabytes of LPDDR2 SD RAM, a CSI One camera connector, micro SD slot, mini HDMI port, micro USB, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth onto the 65 by 30 millimeter board, to which I say, Impressive. Impressive. More chip fabs in the world would be a good thing, one would think, given the global shortage right now, and another might be coming to Italy if they successfully woo Intel, presumably with delicious food and wine, which is what they wooed me with back when I visited. The 4 billion euro project could create 1,000 new jobs, and discussions with Intel are at an advanced stage, but it's still not confirmed. So Italy, Here's what worked on me. Take Intel to the little town of Positano on the Amalfi Coast and treat them to the most delicious bolognese they've ever had with a bottle of local red wine from a vineyard that's right up the road while enjoying a breathtaking Mediterranean sunset. And I'm sure they'll close the deal. Now I'm hungry. Back to reality though, where Asus UK and OC3D have just kicked off a banger of a giveaway for a GPU. Those are pretty hard to come by right now and winners of this giveaway will be given the chance to buy one at MSRP. What, you thought they'd win the GPU for free? Do you know what the street value of an RTX 3070 Ti is right now? Don't be ridiculous. Asus is offering us the chance to buy a card for the asking price, and I just couldn't imagine a more exciting thing to enter to win. Sign me up. Noctua, meanwhile, is living up to their reputation of taking a very long time to release products. The next-gen NHD 15, which might be called the NHD 16, has now been pushed to Q3 2022 on their product roadmap, likely because the 140mm variant of their NF-A12X25 fan is also still unreleased and would be the fans that ship with that cooler. That's slated for Q2 2022, along with white fans, which are also a step up from their stock color choices. Take your time, Noctua. We'll be waiting, but we're not gonna hold our breaths. AMD's Threadripper 5000 high-end desktop CPUs have been spotted multiple times this year, and most recently a 5975WX Pro CPU, codenamed Chagall, has popped up with some results on Geekbench. Not too bad multi-core scores for the 32-core 64-thread chip, although it comes with some sad news as well if Twitter leaker executable fix is to be believed. x says Pro, or workstation variants of the Chagall chips, will be all that there are, and non-pro consumer versions are canceled. This could be AMD just pushing more of their yields to Epic CPUs that sell for way more money, or it could be a lack of interest due to the availability of high core count mainstream options like the 5950X. Either way, it seems the high-end desktop space could do with more competition, so hopefully Intel will have some consumer options for Sapphire Rapids. Finally, just in case you were feeling optimistic with these Intel launches going on, here's a reminder from AMD, Nvidia, and Intel that everything still sucks. All three say that things are unlikely to get better in terms of the chip shortage, even in 2022, with 2023 being the year they see a light at the end of the tunnel. AMD's Lisa Su seems most optimistic and hopes for better conditions in the second half of next year. If there's any silver lining, it's that we're in the worst of it now, according to Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger, and every quarter next year will be getting incrementally better. So I guess when you're at rock bottom, the only way to go is up. So on that super positive note, I will say, there you have it guys, tech news for the week, and I hope that every quarter for you gets incrementally better, no matter where you're at, as we continue to muddle through late 2021. But happy Halloween, I'm gonna go carve pumpkins and roast some seeds, but since you're still here, your feedback is always welcome, so please feel free to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested in further reading. You can also click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out my, wait, wait, you, you will click the like button if you enjoyed this video. You can also check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.